Hello guys and welcome. Today I will take care of this very old mainboard from the year 1989. It looks quite dirty but also kind of uh, beautiful because the PCB is half transparent and you can see the traces through the layers. It looks great. Okay, but first let's see what we have here. This seems to be a full-size AT mainboard with a chipset from PC Chips. It has no battery on board. But it has a, an external connector for a battery, that's nice. I think we all know what happens to such old mainboards when battery is on board. At least in my case, every second mainboard is broken because of the corrosion due to um, battery leakage. The CPU we have here is the um, Intel 386DX33. And there is no mathematical coprocessor installed. And here we have two BIOS chips, the odd and the even, as it was usual back in the days. Okay, I think we are ready for the first run. The CPU is socketed, that's nice, because we can exchange it if there is something wrong with it. Furthermore, the mainboard is using the normal SIM slots for memory modules like this. And we never should forget our most important test tool, the PC speaker for the postcodes. This can give us a first hint if the mainboard is working at all, or uh, if it's initializing, or the memory is missing or something. Okay, I just realized that uh, these modules are 256 kilobyte each. So um, I would uh, prefer to take something more appropriate and here we go I have here four modules with one megabyte each 10 stands for 100 nanosecond memory but I think this will be enough for this old main board I shouldn't do it on the first run but in this case I have a good feeling so I will also add the graphics card the IO controller and the floppy drive And after a little bit of poking around and searching for the right boot disk, the system booted finally and it seemed to work. Now it's time to do some cleaning. Some chips were covered with some kind of glue, so I used the WD-40 to clean them. On the back on the mainboard, some of the contacts were rusted. Looks like this mainboard had some contact with water. I used white vinegar and a brush to get rid of the rust. I used the tap water to wash off the residue and dried everything with a hairdryer. The rust was sitting quite hard. I had to repeat the procedure multiple times, also using IPA to improve the effect. And after a while, I was quite happy with the result. In the end, you can still see some rust, but anyway, it was a huge improvement. Okay, now it's time to add the battery. I would like to use a modern CR2032 battery cell. However, there is obviously no holder for such a battery on the mainboard. That's why I will use this external battery pack for CR2032 batteries and connect it to the pins on the mainboard. In this pack you can use up to two batteries. However, one battery is enough for us, so if we just bend uh, the contacts of the first battery, we will be able to close the uh, uh, package and uh, use only one battery in it. And as you can see, we have 3.2 volt and this is more than enough. The next problem with this uh, battery pack is that it has just uh, loose contacts. And since I don't want to uh, solder it directly to the main board, I would like to add a connector. The main board has a pin out for a four pin external battery connector. So I will just uh, add that to the battery pack.
Ok, now testing the battery is a simple task. I will connect the power supply, power up the machine, set up in BIOS everything to boot into DOS, then uh, power off the machine, uh, unplug the power supply, wait a couple of minutes, plug uh, the power supply back again and turn on the machine. It should boot to DOS directly without complaining about missing battery anymore. And as you can see it works flawlessly. Now to the next problem, booting from hard drive. The actual problem is that I don't have an IDE hard drive from that time. What I have is a compact flash card with a Corden IDE adapter. However, many mainboards from that time just can boot from the compact flash card. There was no hard drive auto detection back in the days. However, even if you set up in the BIOS everything manually, the uh, um, booting from compact flash just wouldn't work. And this is exactly what we see on this mainboard. Luckily, there is a solution, it's called XT IDE. This has been made for uh, old XT computers to connect the modern IDE drives here. However, this is even helpful on more modern AT machines. As you can see, I have uh, here in this mainboard uh, just a normal IDE controller and the BIOS, which is on the mainboard itself, is uh, capable only to boot a normal IDE drive, but not the compact flash uh, cards. The topic XT IDE is worth it to make a separated video, but uh, in this video I will just use a prepared EEPROM chip in a network card uh, to enable booting from compact flash cards on this mainboard. Maybe I will do another video where I explain how to create your own EEPROMs for such cases. If you are interested in such a video, please uh, let me know by leaving a comment below and I'll try to find some time to do that. But as for now, I will just plug it into an ISO slot and power up the machine. It should then detect uh, our compact flash as a hard drive automatically. Oh, that's nice. We again can see that our battery is working, since the mainboards remember the IDE settings of the hard drive I made. That's why we see this annoying AGD error again. The setting must be removed in the mainboard BIOS, because it would conflict with the XT IDE own settings anyway. Since we removed all the hard drive settings, after rebooting we shouldn't see any HDD errors anymore, because the mainboard wouldn't even try to access any hard drive. And luckily we see this XT IDE menu on top of the screen, and as you can see detected our compact flash card automatically. It appears as a primary IDE master in the list of detected devices. And here we are booted into DOS from a compact flash card on a mainboard which actually doesn't support such. Now let me summarize. The mainboard was from the beginning not only beautiful, but completely working. However, it obviously had a contact with water and was quite rusty on the backside. We removed the rust, added an external battery and convinced this mainboard to boot from a modern compact flash card. I call it a success and will now play around with a little bit more. However, I hope you enjoyed this video and would like to see you again on my channel. Please leave me your comments and let me know if you would like to see more content like this or if I should stop it instantly and search myself another hobby. So far, thank you and goodbye.